Now let's look at the browser. We call that into view by pressing B. A browser provides a quick way of finding and importing various files and elements into Sona. These are known collectively as objects and include wave and MIDI clips, loops, synths, effects. In fact, just about everything we need for project creation and management. As with most views, it can be docked and floated from the docking menu. Once undocked, it can be hidden by pressing the close icon or using Control F4. Pressing B will reshow it again. Redock it by clicking on the docking icon. It can be widened by click dragging and generally set up to suit the way you want to work. The browser has three modes. They are the media browser, the plugin browser, and the synthrack browser. We'll take a closer look at each of these modes one by one. As a rule of thumb, the various objects can be added to a project for the browser in one of two ways. Either dragging the object to a location that's appropriate for the object type, or double clicking on the object. Behaviour will depend on the object. Double clicking on an effect, for example, will have no effect. But double clicking on a clip will insert that clip into the project. It will be inserted into the current track at the current now time. As you can see, that clip went into track one at the now time. If you try to drag an object into an appropriate location, the cursor will indicate this. Let's click on the Media tab to reveal the Media Browser. This provides us with an easy way to find and import various elements such as audio files, MIDI files, video files, templates, track icons and effects chain presets. Let's look at the interface. The first icon moves us back up a directory level. And the drop down to the right provides us with a quick shortcut to our content preset locations. We can also double click here to rename locations. Some are defined by default and cannot be deleted. Others can be created and deleted by using the save icon and the delete icon. To create a location, navigate to the folder you wish to use as a preset and then click on the save icon. If at some point you decide you want to delete that, simply call it up from the preset menu and click on delete. Notice this only deletes the preset, not the actual folder on disk. The start stop preview icon allows us to preview clips prior to import. The search filter box allows us to filter content in the main pane here to narrow down selection. For example, typing bass will only allow clips with the word bass in their name to be shown. Removing it again, we reveal all of the files available. The drop down menu to the right of the media tab allows us to set various view and behavior options. For example, we can set the auto preview option, which means we will hear a clip preview automatically without clicking on the play preview icon. Preview at host tempo will force a preview to play at our current project tempo. And the loop option will continue to loop the preview regardless of whether it's a loop or a one-shot clip. To hear the preview, we need to make sure that the preview bus is set to one of our buses routed to our main outputs. To hear a MIDI clip preview, we also need to define a default synth, but we have to have a synth inserted into the synth rack first for there to be an option here. We'll look at how to do that shortly when we get to the synth rack tab. Once a preview bus has been set and the auto loop is on, you'll hear a preview of the loop simply by clicking on it. We can also export clips to the browser, so let's take a look at that. First we need to navigate to the desired location.
Once we have the desired clip target location open, it's simply a matter of dragging the clip from the track view into the browser. Once there, it's available in other projects in exactly the same way that any other object is. Let's move on to the plugin browser. This mode is further subdivided into four different pages audio effects, MIDI effects, instruments, and rewire devices. Let's look at audio effects first. Here we see our installed audio plugins as well as any FX2 presets. We can customize this view by opening the plugin manager from the plugin drop down menu here. We looked at that earlier as part of the setup. Again, the search filter can be used to filter the effects displayed in the lower pane. Type in comp, for example, just displays any effects with the letters C O M P in a name. Very handy for selecting a certain type of effect. An effect can be dragged from here into the effects bin, either on a track or in the inspector or in the console view. Dragging an effect onto a clip will place it in the clip bin. MIDI effects work in exactly the same way, but can only be dragged to MIDI tracks. There's no need to go all the way to the track header, you can drag it to a track. That applies to audio effects as well. Gain will be placed in the effects bin. Switch into the instruments tab. From here we can insert soft synths, either using drag and drop into an empty area of the clips pane, or double clicking on the synth name. Either method will open the insert synth options dialog where we can choose how the synth is set up. We'll look at these options in more detail later. Inserting a synth will automatically place it in the synth rack. If you wish to use a synth as a track effect, then drag it directly to the required tracks effects bin or its track header area. The rewire device tab will display any rewire devices that you may have installed. Rewire allows Sona to communicate with programs in real time as if they were patched together with cables. The behavior of rewire devices is similar to that of Soft Synths and the Insert Synth Options dialog will appear, but you can only have one instance of each rewire device inserted at a time. If we switch to the Synth tab, here we can see and manage any synths or rewire devices that we already have in a project. We can insert, replace and delete synths from here using the icons and menu choices. And we can also access any existing synths property pages, as well as setting default insert options. The selection of controls visible will depend on whether the browser is docked, docked in the multi-dock, or floating. We'll look at the synth rack in depth when we work with the soft synths. Once a synth is inserted in the synth rack, it can be set as the preview synth, And then MIDI clips can be previewed in exactly the same way as audio clips are. Either automatically by clicking on them if that option is set, or clicking on the play button. I'll be using the browser throughout the videos.